Hello everybody and welcome to Solar Impulse TV. You're watching the first out of five special news reports that we'll be making this week from the Green Week events here in Brussels. The week is dedicated to talks about renewable energy and the potential of the existing technology. But first, let's have a look at yesterday when the hangar here behind me had a very prominent visit of the European Commissioner of Transport, Mr. Sim Callas, who was quite impressed by the aircraft. Let's have a look. <laughs> if we continue just so and are not doing anything, we will simply will will very soon will be in, in the position that transport will will not develop at all and will not function at all because we have two major issues. One is congestion and another is a shortage of, of uh, or dependency of fuel. We must we must move. And I'm enormously impressed by people who are developing such projects, which are, which uh, which can uh, can carry a lot of uh, of ideas, and uh, and definitely uh, these kind of things always give a boost. If it's possible to fly without fuel or oil uh, or uh, uh, fuel produced from fossil fuels, why it's not possible in these other areas? Yeah. Although it's night, it's impressive. It's incredible. Well, these are incredible technologies for 100 there. watts, all the leading edge. If you want to be successful, you should not sleep and you should not miss this possibility to develop. So it's uh, everything is, is, is relative and of course um, Frontrunners are always a winner. All the best. All my encouragement for all what you try to achieve. It's great. Politics is somehow... Thank you to you. Not less Thank complex you you to construct this I machine. Know. <laughs> <laughs> but, As you could see on the images, it was a very enthusiastic commissioner for transport who came by yesterday. Later on in the evening, a lot of other enthusiastic people paid a visit to the hangar, among them very prominent politicians. We managed to speak to President of the European Parliament, Mr. Jerzy Busek, Vivian Redding, Commissioner for Human Rights, Justice and Citizenship, and of course, Commissioner for Climate Action, Connie Hilgo. Here's how it went. Vivian Redding, you as a Commissioner for Justice, Human Rights and Citizenship of the European Union, why are you attending an event that's supporting renewable energy? I am most of all the Vice President of the European Commission and as such I represent the whole European Union and the whole European Commission for this event. And I believe this event is emblematic for what European research can do and what the idea of a human being can do in order to put the future in the uh, actual life. And I am here also as a friend of Bertrand Picard, whom I admire and like and accompany since several years. So I am very thrilled to be here and to see how the ideas of some can bring our research and our innovation forward in Europe. Yes, because what part of the idea behind Solar Impulse is it that you like the most? I like the most to make the impossible possible and uh, Bertrand has already shown several times that he is capable of doing that and that uh, he can dream and then the dream becomes reality just because he wants it. So I believe it is also a very good example of what uh, a strong character can achieve if you want to limit the unlimited to something you can do today 
you have the possibility to do it and I think it's wonderful. To see also what happened in the last three years, we have prepared a little film on these two screens that will show you also the team at work. Can you please launch the film? which makes you to enter in the world instead of having just how much money am I going to make when I come out of university? No, why not to have a dream? Mr. President, Jerzy Busek, thank you very much for joining us here. Why did you choose to come here tonight to the Solar Impulse dinner party? Well, thank you very much for invitation. Uh, well, I am educated as engineer. So for, for me, inventions, not only innovations, uh, are of crucial importance. And uh, uh, the previous term in office of European Parliament, uh, I was a rapporteur of seven framework program for research, development and new technologies. And later on, I was also a rapporteur, it was great privilege for me, uh, for the strategic energy technology plan for the European Union with all the European uh, industrial initiatives in solar, biomass, wind energy, in um, uh, smart grids, with carbon capture and storage, and nuclear power as well. So, I'm very interested in such a things. So, your, your interest in technology is something, but then what does it make you feel to see a, let's say, a technological invention as unique as the solar impulse aircraft? Uh, that's not only uh, my, my, my natural um, behavior to be closer to the, to the technologies and new inventions, but it's a great future of the European Union. We should not compete and to have a dumping prices because of no protection of environment or climate or um, not uh, having a, a social aids for our citizens, we would like to, to compete with new technologies. It's a great way to winning competition in our economy all over the world. So it is so important, it's one vehicle only, but with a great movement forwards in many industries. It was like, you know, maybe it's not comparison, but let us re re remind us once again, landing on the moon. Of course, it was enormous technological achievement, but uh, on the on the side of the old projects, they they discovered so many things from very small to very big that for next 20, 30 years, as we could see, American industry, American te uh, research, technology was the first all over the world. Now. Chinese, Japanese, and I hope European Union will be competing in such a things. We need such a projects. It's great for development the whole European Union. So yes, also one of your six main points that you wanted to work on as a president of the European Parliament is an European energy community. What is that? Well, uh, it is about uh, making our, our energy available for everybody. So it means security of supply. Secondly, it means environmental protection, climate protection. And third, 
to make it as cheap as possible because everything, our competitiveness depends on the prices of energy. And uh, we would like to achieve it together with former President of the European Commission, Mr. Jacques Delors, we launched this idea. Uh, we would like to achieve it through uh, open, free, a complete market for energy, for example, cross-border connections inside European Union for gas, for electricity. Second, with joint research in energy issue, very promoting for our economy and new achievements. And third, common purchasing or at least coordination of purchasing gas and electricity and any other energy resource from outside of the European Union, because uh, we are competing from inside the European Union for our uh, 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 well um, main uh, energy suppliers, and we are weak in this competition. If we are united as European Union in our negotiations, we would be much stronger. So it's very easy, very simple. It's something like umbrella on our common energy policy in the European Union. I think it will be helpful for every citizen because it's the most important our citizens reply on our ideas. So even though it sounds easy, it also sounds difficult. But thank you very much for joining us here tonight. Thank Mr. you very much. And, good and luck congratulations for, thank you. for the constructors and inventors. Great idea. Thank you very much, President, Vice Presidents, ladies and gentlemen. I must say it's, a, say it's an uh, extraordinary evening. And therefore, we wanted to sort of show the big narrative, the big story, proving that climate change is not just about climate change, although that is very important in itself. Can you go? Thank you very much for joining us here. I know you don't have a lot of time, so let's make it short. You've been fighting not only as a commissioner for climate action, but also as a politician for a very long time for the environment. Why are you here tonight? Well, because one thing is that politicians can put up political frameworks and regulations and standards and targets. But what really matters is will there be some solutions out there? And this is a fabulous thing. It's so innovative, it's so creative. And that's what we need, that people can see that climate change does not have to be about a dull and gray life. It can actually be a very creative, a very innovative, a very interesting life. And that's why we need solutions like this. So what's the biggest option? obstacle in order for you to achieve your goals? Well, I think that the world is moving. It's moving always too slow for my taste, but it's actually moving. And the countries start to realize that to address climate change can be done intelligently. So at the same time, you become more energy efficient. You can save money, you can create growth, you can create jobs, you can create innovation. And this is important for the whole world. It's extremely important for Europe. And this is an example how climate change energy savings, renewables, and innovation and jobs goes hand in hand. Yes, because how can this uh, aircraft help you to convey your message, not only to industries, but also to citizens worldwide because, and in Europe? Because it's tangible, it's visible. People will say, wow, is that really possible? And everybody will know, well, it does not mean that all the planes here from Brussels airport will tomorrow be done by run by a, a solar energy. But it makes it tangible, it makes it visible. Wow, there is another kind of future than the black fossil fuel based future. And that is what it's all about. <laughs>